All right, this one for me, honestly, isn't even a match. Uh, this is a, a confrontation inside of the ring, but this is the main event to me. For years and years, we've been waiting to see when Sting was going to finally be brought into the WWE family. There was the big time rumors revolving around WrestleMania 27, uh, WrestleMania 28, uh, WrestleMania 30 when his contract finally came up uh, from TNA. Every year, Sting would sign this one year deal with TNA to stick around and it always come up around the Royal Rumble. And everyone every year was hoping that this is the year Sting would finally come to WWE and have this match against Undertaker. Uh, last year, uh, the rumors were swirling around Sting making an appearance on the Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania. He was already in town. He signed autographs and, and took pictures at WrestleCon, a very cool event last year in New Orleans. Um, but uh, Monday Night Raw came and left. And he was nowhere to be seen. And then the rumors kept on coming up that, you know, Sting would appear at Extreme Rules. Sting would be a part of this. Sting would be a part of that. And nothing ever came to be before Sting finally showed up at WWE Comic Con. And at that point, it was even said that Sting still didn't have a uh, WWE contract. But he had made a deal with the video game company that he would be um, the, sort of the main guy pushing the game this year. He would be involved in the commercial. It would be a big deal that this would be the first WWE video game to ever feature the likeness of Sting. People have always been really good at going into the creative wrestler and you know sort of creating a sting from the you know, you know past history, but this is one he actually went to the people and he got scanned and he's into the game for real. No more of like you know the face paint is a little bit off. This is the the real deal. Sting has finally come into it, and and from there uh, we saw Sting. You know do, do the video game uh, commercial came and went. People kept on thinking that he would show his face. He would be a part of WWE television, whether if he was just a talking piece, people were trying to find anything for him, whether if he was going to be the uh, the GM of Monday Night Raw, which was something that a lot of people uh, thought once that job came up, that he would be the guy, you know, filling that role coming in. And even at that point, people thought that he would be the guy to step up to the plate and take on the authority. Now, here, you know, comes Survivor Series, the chance finally, uh, for uh, the authority to be removed, they were going up against Team Cena. It, it came down to the end. Uh, Seth Rollins going up against Dolph Ziggler. Um, you know, and you know, all the cheating and everything. You know, came to an end. Uh, basically, with Triple H getting in the ring, trying to make sure that you know him and Stephanie McMahon, their jobs were saved. Um, and out of the darkness came Sting with a big, huge debut. Um, basically, you know, the people went ballistic, people went crazy. Um, you know, you could just see an eruption of, of the fans. I think that was, uh, I can't remember where Survivor Series was. I know that my good buddy Victor uh, was at that show. And uh, you can see him, you know, this big time reaction. Uh, you know, when when Sting comes out, he was one of the fans that they, they got captured. Uh, by the camera, and even sitting at home, I was like, damn, that is cool. Um, you know, the, the only problem that I had was that night, um, I, I worked, so I came home and watched Survivor Series on the replay on the WWE Network in the on-demand section, and when you loaded up the WWE Network on Apple TV, there was a thing, don't miss Sting's debut at Survivor Series. God's honest truth that I knew Sting was going to be there. It was just, you know, too obvious the fact that WWE was pushing that that, that that this was going to be his debut. But you don't need to see a picture of his debut <laughs> on the uh, service that you're going to watch. But, you know, since then, you know, Triple H has been looking for answers. Why Sting has, um, you know, been there to... Uh, you know, sort of interrupt their plans. He showed up again on Monday Night Raw in a match where it was uh, Cena going up against Big Show, Corporate Kane, and uh, Rollins in a three-on-one handicap match, uh, letting Cena get the victory by rolling up Seth Rollins. And from there, you got to see um, uh, John uh, John Cena save the jobs of Eric Rowan, Dolph Ziggler, and Ryback just in time for them to come and make their return uh, to WWE for the Royal Rumble. Uh, of course, uh, Eric Rowan wouldn't be able to compete in the Royal Rumble because he loses his match to Luke Harper, but he still comes out and jumps Curtis Axel, and um, then, then we get it from there. But 
In this, you know, head-to-head meeting, we're finally going to figure out why Sting has come to WWE for so many years. You can tell by watching Monday Night Raw that this is a little bit more than just Triple H versus uh, Sting. They're almost playing this off as the the last WCW invasion with Triple H coming out and saying that he's not going to let WCW beat him. He's making this more about, you know, where Sting came from uh, than, you know, what Sting is doing. I know that you want to get that big payday by having Sting come to WWE. He's always that one guy that's that never been a part of their picture. You know, you could think of um, the stories of basically, you know, what if, you know, Vince McMahon had picked Sting over the Ultimate Warrior and Sting would have came in, um, you know, and it would have been Sting versus Warrior. Um, you know, it, would Sting even have rose to those those heights um, to have the big main event at WrestleMania 6? Would Sting have sort of, you know, been a guy who flauntered around in the mid-card, making Hulk Hogan's long run in WWE last even longer? Uh, would they have noticed who it was if Sting didn't have the guidance of, uh, you know, Ric Flair and Ricky Steamboat to push them? Um, you know, would he have even, you know, figured out how to get him uh, to that point? A lot of people say that even when Sting rose to uh, the, 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 the his first stardom in WCW and the NWA, um, you know, when he beat Flair at the Clash of the Champions, that he was still, you know, pretty green at that point and wasn't ready to take on the main event. I think Sting was great. He's not one of my favorite wrestlers. I like to go back and, and watch his matches. And I think that honestly, um, I really did... Sting wasn't even one of my favorite guys in the, in the dying days of WCW, but I think that what really hurt him the most was him sticking around in TNA as long as he did, uh, knowing that he was the guy that got them over one of the big mountains to get them onto cable television. And, you know, they were loyal to him and stuck with him as being their franchise. And, uh, you know, the, the, they're, you know, a big piece of the puzzle there. But there was a lot of times in, uh, you know, in TNA that he just didn't, he didn't need to be there. I mean, it was hurting him to be there. He wasn't helping anymore. Um, he wasn't delivering big, you know, big matches. I know that the main event of the Bound for Glory in Philadelphia was Sting versus Hogan in a match that nobody really needed to see and nobody was really you know, that ecstatic for. But um, it's going to be hard to see how they connect the dots. But this is one that I really want to see. I think that Sting versus Triple H is a match that really could deliver at WrestleMania 31. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the way that they're going, but, you know, there always could be the fact of, you know, um, what if Randy Orton doesn't return for the millionth time? Uh, what if it's Seth Rollins versus Sting is something that could be in my mind. It is Sting that, that has handed Seth Rollins two losses uh, in those um, you know, Team Cena match and the match against Cena. It, it's Rollins, the guy who's gotten embarrassed by Sting, even though Triple H is the guy who's you know reacted the most to everything that was going on. But we're going to have to see. This is going to be the face-to-face -face confrontation to see what happens. You know, Ric Flair has showed up and Ric Flair has um, warned uh, Triple H not to take Sting lightly. You know, uh, easily when you think of Ric Flair, you think of Sting. When you think of Sting, you think of Ric Flair. These are two guys that go hand in hand. Without one, there is not the other. Well, Flair's got Dusty, so never mind that. But yeah, at least when you think of Sting, you always think of Flair. And uh, you know, Flair, being the best friend of Triple H, uh, you know, basically was was warning him. You know that this guy, you know, you don't wrestle all the time anymore. You're not a full time guy. You're more of a businessman. Um, you you get into the ring with this guy, he's gonna take you lightly. It seems like they're already setting up the fact of this is going to be a match. And uh, they're not treating this like this is a contract signing, but you could definitely see that some sort of challenge is going to be issued. And it's just going to see how they're able to put the puzzle together. That's going to be the biggest part. So I'll see this at Fastlane and I'll be pumped.